What were the long-term plans of the Nazis for occupied Netherlands? In May 1940, the Germans conquered the Netherlands and the country remained occupied for the upcoming five years. But what were the long-term plans of the Nazis for this occupied low country? Did the Netherlands have to be absorbed into a greater Germanic Reich? Did it have to become a Nazi client state or something else? That is what you're gonna find out in this video. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history for you. If you found it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. It was May 15th, 1940, in the Dutch town of Rijsoort, General Winkelmann, the commander of the Dutch armed forces, signed the unconditional surrender. The Netherlands had fallen. Although, with the exception of Zeeland, because there were still Allied troops located there, they had to be evacuated first, and then the whole of the Netherlands was occupied by Nazi Germany. The city center of Rotterdam was now a smoke and ruin, in which 800 Dutch civilians had perished, over 2,000 Dutch soldiers had fallen on the battlefield, many of them were killed on the Gebeberg, where a battle was fought. The initial occupation was light. Hitler considered the Dutch as fellow Aryans, according to his racial theories. As a sign of good gesture, the Dutch POWs were released in the summer of 1940. The highest authority was Reichskommissar Arthur Sassenquart. Under him, 1,500 German civil servants worked and they instructed the Dutch civil servants. Furthermore, the German police of the Sicherheitspolizei was stationed in the country as well, as well as German soldiers on the Dutch coast in case of a British attack. These soldiers were also kept in the country to maintain order. The initial impression of the German occupier wasn't negative. The German soldiers were seen as fine lads. Many Dutch were disappointed in the royal family who had abandoned the country Furthermore, the German armies booked spectacular results in the month after May 1940. Hitler appointed Arthur Sassenquart as Reichskommissioner of the Netherlands. The Dutch actually mocked him by calling him six and a quarter. Because if you say it in Dutch, it sounds like six and a quarter, and that is not much. Yet, Sassenquart was a very intelligent man. He had an IQ of 141, and it seemed to be incompatible. Nazism and intelligence. What seems even more incompatible is sensitivity, which Sazenquart also possessed. The combination of intelligence and feeling with National Socialism can only be understood from the perspective of totality. Like all convinced Nazis, Sazenquart was a total human being and therefore capable of a passion that eliminates all compassion and pushes the individual beyond himself. For Sazenquart, National Socialism fulfilled the function that faith would have fulfilled in other circumstances. It abolished everything else. It was the way to the destination. In his case, that destiny was the grand ideal of a Third Reich. Sazenquart promised that he would not impose his ideology on the Dutch people, but this turned out to be a lie, as the Nazis set in motion a process of Gleichschaltung coordination, where they established a system of totalitarian control and coordination over all aspects of Dutch society, from the economy and trade associations to the media, culture and education. Freedoms of press and speech were abolished, and many Dutch responded with aversion. They didn't even understand who the Nazis really think that after such a treacherous invasion, the Dutch would go along with their ideology. So how did Sazenquart view the Netherlands? After the 80 years war was over in 1648, yeah, we go way back, the Dutch had turned away from the Germanic Reich. The country had fled in an ideal of windmill and clocks and needed to be awakened. There were three options. The Asian step spirit from the East. Americanism from the West and Germanic National Socialism. Sazenquart argued the Netherlands was related to Germany by race and blood and should become a federal state of Germany. Within this structure, there was room for the Dutch to be themselves. 
It was the German Führer that was responsible for this process. In 1943, Seisenquart had written this in a paper he handed to Mussert, the leader of the Dutch Nazi party. Hitler told the same story to Mussert a few months later. Hitler argued that his goal was not to undutch the Dutch, but to solve with the other Germanic people what must be solved together. It's kind of hard what to make of this. See, after 1945, Fascism and National Socialism was labeled as a nonsense ideology that came from crooks and bandits. But even back then, it was kind of hard to determine what its exact goal was. Sassenquart often repeated that European culture was ill and National Socialism was the cure. And therefore, Sassenquart was involved in the publications of cultural magazines. He stimulated exhibitions and concerts and he also gave lectures. To that extent, fascism and Nazism can be labeled as a convulsion of a world that passed away, albeit that this world never really existed. It was an invented tradition, a phenomenon that, although situated in an existing past, was actually invented and had no other purpose than to legitimize a political ideology. To illustrate this, let's take a look at Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. Now, he imagined that the Netherlands, Belgium and northeastern France had to become a province of the Germanic Third Reich and it would be named Burgundia. This referred to the era of the Burgundian Netherlands. So when the Nazis conquered the Netherlands, this ideology could become a reality, but it would not be easy. First and foremost, most Dutch were not drawn to the extreme of ideologies, nor communism, nor fascism or national socialism. In the eyes of most Dutchmen, Nazi Germany had a bad image even before the war. The Dutch Nazis, mostly united in the NSB, the Dutch Nazi party, enjoyed a brief electoral success in 1935, but were then pushed back to the margins of society. The sentiment was, national socialism was German stuff. It's maybe good for them, but not for us. Um, second, the NSB leader Anton Mussert had different ideas. He envisioned a Dutch fascist state within a fascist Europe, albeit somewhat independent of Germany. His colleague Meinhard Ross van Tonningen, on the other hand, believed that the Netherlands should be fully integrated in the Third Reich. Do notice that Mussert did want to cater the Germans as much as possible, especially after they had taken over the country. Initially, Mussert was not anti-Semitic, but he later would become so. At the end, it did not work out. As said before, the Dutch were not persuaded to the ideology of National Socialism, and that was for a large part due to Dutch culture. To be more specific, pillarization, verzuiling, the politico-denominational segregation of a society into groups by religion and associated political beliefs. This was organized horizontally in line with democracy where irreconcilable elements existed next to each other. This was against everything the Nazis stood for because they advocated a dictatorship which was vertically and where deviating elements had to be eliminated. The Germans demanded uniformity. The Dutch tried to maintain their diversity as much as possible. A tug of war was the result. In most cases, the Germans fed up with the discussion, at some point took the decision and forced the Dutch to make adjustments. Subsequently, the Dutch supposedly bowed their heads, but in fact continued as much as possible the way they always had done things. Their mentality was different from that of the Germans. Interesting enough, in 1944, Sazenquart reflected on his rule regarding the Netherlands. And he argued the biggest mistake was to force the Dutch into his system. It didn't work and resistance was the result. So did the Nazis have a unambiguous plan of what to do with occupied Netherlands? Nope. The German Nazis weren't on the same page and the Dutch Nazis weren't on the same page either. And then there were external factors that influenced the German plans. The fact that most Dutch weren't drawn to National Socialism. The fact that Nazi culture was at odds with Dutch culture. And perhaps the biggest factor of them all, the downfall of the Third Reich. If the Nazis would have prevailed and if Germany would have won the Second World War, we can only speculate 
what had become of the occupied Netherlands. Thanks to my patrons, you see their names on the screen right now. And a special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Marcus Kaas, Nick Terranova, Haley, Mark Little Hale, Janus Jorgenkiewicz, Joan, Jester Tabel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Fabrizio, Way Back History, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Luis Pichera, and Mike West. If you want to learn about the Dutch perspective on the German occupation of the Netherlands during World War II, you can click right here. And if you want to learn about the German invasion of the Netherlands, you want to learn about this short campaign, you can find the details right here. I want to thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a reply, share this video, and tot de volgende keer, maar weer.